What's good, Joe? Welcome to my review for Solo, a Star Wars story. It's the second movie in the Star Wars anthology series. And overall, guys, I gotta say the movie was actually uh, pleasantly surprised. I did not expect it to be turned out as good as it ended up being. So let's talk about it. So, the movie is directed well. It was directed by a lot of people, but Ron Howard is not credit. And stars Ed- Edlin R- and Richie, Donald Glover, which, by the way, guys, I'll probably be using This Is America as a background song for this video because... Nothing from the soundtrack really stuck out to me. I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be the sound background song to my soundtrack, to my review. But, so yeah, I hope you all like Do- Donald Glover. <laughs> and uh, Emily Claret and Woodley, Woodley, uh, Woodley, Woody Harrelson, he's like, cannot speak today, and many more. And the plot of Solo is pretty much like Rogue One, which Rogue One was telling us, you know, how the, the Rebels got their hands in the Death Star. This movie is pretty much, you know, giving us the backstory and also how we got the Millennium Falcon, how we met our good old pal Chewie, how he, you know, got the name on Solo, and of course how he became the scruffy looking, half witted nerf herder that is also a scoundrel that we all know and love. So, like I said, guys, the movie was pleasantly surprising. Now, let's talk about the cast. Now, the cast are in the start, but I gotta say, guys, um,. Edlin, Edlin, Rich, and Richie, and Richie, I'm probably saying his name, I can't honestly have him for some of you kids me today. Anyway, um, he, I thought, was pleasant, definitely, uh, definitely surprised me as Hansel. I did, he did a lot better than I thought I was. Now, Grant, am I saying, like, oh, yeah, this guy is Hansel, this guy is Har- is, is, is Harrison Ford, but no, because, like, you know, Harrison Ford, that man is leading himself, but he was pretty good. I still think maybe Chris Pratt could have done a better job. That's just me, but I think he was pretty good. Donald Glover. My man, my man, did he steal the show with Lando? Oh my God! Every time the man was on screen, I'm like, yes, you are Lando, my friend. You are Lando, my friend. Oh my God, the man just stole the show. He was ever the best part of the movie, and his joy was an L4. <laughs> man, did I love her! <laughs> I love that droid. I love her. Let's see, guys. I love these two. Somebody, please get these guys a solo movie. Somebody, get these guys an anthology movie. Cause man, I would love to see a movie just on them. And in case you guys want to look like, in case you guys want to look like, hey, good. What do you think about Lando being pansexual? I honestly do not care. Like, whatever. <laughs> I also don't care about that shit like that. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. You're ready for Bill them, but f- I don't really care. So, like I said, he, Woody Harrelson was pretty good as well. Um, but Woody Harrelson is always great. Like, man, when I saw him in, like, you know, third, in, like uh, three billboards, the man was great there. The man is great here. And, yeah. Um, overall, I definitely now, one major fly I really have with this movie is that. It definitely plays safe, like, cause after the last Jedi, you know, last year, which I got, which you guys know that's my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. Do not add me. I after the major risk it took, like, you know, it giving us the best interpretation of Luke Skywalker. Don't add me, and you know, all the rest of that movie took, and how you know ballsy it was. This movie definitely plays a lot more safe for like. You probably have heard from like you do the trailer from like you know commercials, TV spots, reviews like you know this movie is a fun popcorn flick, which it is. But at the same time, I expect more from Star Wars. Like there's never been a Star Wars movie that I've seen. Jesus fucking Christ, my iPad is blowing up right now. Jesus. All right, turned off notification my phone because Jesus Christ, the thing was blowing up like crazy. Anyway, this movie definitely plays so safe. Now, but that's something I don't. Really, but that's something I kind of I expect more from Star Wars. I don't expect I don't want Star Wars to play itself because like you know, you guys know much about Star Wars. It's one of my favorite sci-fi franchises. It's probably my favorite sci-fi franchise of all time. But the only rival really being the Alien franchise. And this movie is a fun popcorn flick, but you know it definitely plays itself like there. Like this movie is this, this movie doesn't do anything really that bad, but it doesn't really do anything that good. It's kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, Dead Man Tell No Tales. Like if you saw my review for that, I gave it like a six. Um, I said that, you know, it was good, but it doesn't take any risks. It's, it's like, you know, it doesn't do anything really that well, but it doesn't really do anything bad, hence why I gave it a lower rate. This, I definitely say it's a lot better, but I wouldn't say this is as strong as Rogue One, because at least Rogue One took at least a couple of risks, and plus it had that scene in, like, you know, the hallway on how, you know, like, you know, with Vader, oh my god. And by the way, if you guys are expecting this movie to, like, you know, end where, um... Episode four leads in like the Rogue One did, where like you know where it ends is where um, episode, is where a new hope begins. It doesn't. You so this movie will not answer the question that that I, the stupid question like on the you know who shot first, Han or Greedo. Maybe for the sequels if we do get those movies, 
Uh, if we do end up getting like you know um, solo sequels, I'm game for it. I thought this movie was pretty good, but I'm like you know I'm not like solid like yes, give me more. I'm not, and I'm like yeah, whatever. I'm, I mean, I'll watch it anyway. I mean, any movie with the name Star Wars on, I will watch it because you know I fucking love Star Wars. But yeah. But I do have a couple flaws in the movie. I definitely say that one of the flaws I do have is that Land is not in it as much as I wanted it to be. Um, Danny Glover definitely does a great job. Like I said, not Danny Glover. Donald Glover. <laughs> Donald Glover without the social suit. And I would have liked to see him a lot more in the movie, but he isn't really in, his, in it as much as I really wanted him to be. So that's one kind of like a um, kind of flaw I have. And um, another one I have is the romance. Now, I'm not saying it's as bad as Anakin and Padme, as it was, you know, in, you know, like episode 2, Jesus Christ. George Zeus, he can help write romantic dialogue, say, hell, I feel like I could write better dialogue for, for a couple, and I've never even been in a relationship. <laughs> Seriously, I probably could do a better job. Anyway, um, the romance here between Han and uh, Kira was fine, I guess. It was okay. I mean, it's not where near as good as Han and Hitleia was in you know, the original trilogy, but it's nowhere near as bad as that. Eh, I mean, it was okay. It was slightly better than, like, you know, it was slightly better, but I'm like, eh. And we don't really even know really what their connection was. We don't really know what his connection really is to Kira. We just know that, yeah, maybe he's, like, a girlfriend of his. You know, we see him kissing a lot, but he's just like, you know, we're not dating or nothing, but I don't know. Maybe we could have gotten a little more scene, like, you know, really them showing, like, you know, hey, she's really important to him, or... Something along those lines. And also the um, members of Woody Harrelson's crew, we don't, they don't really get much development, and so I don't really care. That, so I didn't really uh, gravitate to them at all. That's another thought how this movie. Uh, yeah. But the good, I definitely see Chewie. When we meet Chewie, oh my god, like how, you know, Chewie and Han meet, and we find in that, and then if we find that Han actually knows how to speak Wookiee. Like, he, like we always knew him as just a translator, but we actually see him actually speaking Wookiee. Like, <laughs> Is there like a book? Has there been like a book release that that gives us like yo? Here's how to do. Here's how to learn Wookie. Like, does that actually exist in Star Wars? A book where you can learn how to speak the Wookie language? And, is that actually a thing? If it is, leave it on the comment section below because I'm like really curious on if that's an actual thing. Here's like a book how to help you to know, speak Wookie, so then you know everything Han said, everything Chewie says, and like you know, the original trilogy, the prequels. Yeah. And we also get a nice. And this is this is not really a spoiler, but it's kind of like a minor spoiler, but it's not really a spoiler. It's like showing off. Like I just want to tell you guys about one of Chewie's moments with Han. Is that you guys? You guys know the bromance we do, but this movie shows you the bromance of their bromance. Like we straight up see the two showering together. Oh, but I thought I was just dying laughing. I was like, <laughs> now that that is a bromance right there, my brothers. <laughs> so yeah. Um, that's what I gotta say this movie, um, it was a, it was a fun popcorn flick, but, I don't know, I feel like this is the, but, and there's one thing I definitely would like to see with the future, and, uh, for these future anthologies, but it's definitely that movies that go farther and farther away from the real established characters, like, you know, like, I hope one day we do get an Obi-Wan Kenobi movie, and I would love to see maybe, like, say, I don't know, uh, Ridley Scott directed, I feel that would be amazing, but Ridley Scott, I'm saying he's too dangerous for Star Wars, um, yeah, you know him. We're gonna get a Boba Fett movie. I'm pretty sure that's to be confirmed by the died by the thing that directed Logan. Holy fuck, shit, that movie's gonna be fucking amazing. And yeah, so yeah, uh, I would like to one day, and hopefully maybe one day Vader gets his own solo movie. That would also be cool. So maybe one on the 501st Legion. That would also be amazing. Maybe even Darth Maul gets one, or um, Darth Plagueis, or you know anyone else. But yeah, um, so yeah, uh, I would like to see the anthology movie one day, like you know go farther and farther away from the Welsh that kind of like, you know, where they, kind of like how the EU and the, or I guess, like, you know, how the EU is in Star Wars and, you know, the books and the comics and even the video games, um, does, like, you know, they, like, you know, they just create their own characters and have them just, you know, tell us their adventures throughout the Star Wars and maybe even throw in, like, you know, some of the Welsh staff characters as quick cameos or something like along those lines. Which I do hope the one day have the we may begin that with like you know with Ryan uh, Johnson's trilogy if that's still going through. Um, so yeah, I would like to one day like get like either an anthology movie or an anthology trilogy or a TV series on the Old Republic. Like, give us Kotor already, Disney. Like, come on, everyone wants Kotor. Why don't you give us Kotor? That's what I. Get. That's my. So yeah. Overall, I give this movie an eight out of ten. Fun popcorn flick. 
But at the same time, if you guys, this is probably my second least favorite Star Wars movie. Now, this ain't bad. Behind, um, the behind, you know, the the Attack of the Clones with Jesus Christ, I straight up hate that movie. And I would say it's not, and I would say it's uh behind or it's ahead of Attack of the Clones and behind uh, the Phantom Menace. That's mostly. Now, I honestly think the Phantom Menace gets way too much hate, but then again, I didn't like, you know, have this huge amount of hype for it and this stuff, hype for it, and then you know, got disappointed because like I saw the movie when I was a kid. But after all the hype had died down and all that shit. But yeah. Uh, so yeah. So, and also guys, here is when we're going to get to the spoiler section. So if you guys have not seen Solo, click off now. You're still here? Great. Darth Maul! <laughs> oh my god. Darth Maul. Whoa, man. When I saw that, I lost my shit in theater. I was like, oh my god. It's Darth Maul. Like, I could just imagine, I feel bad for the people that don't really d dive into the EU. Now, me guys, I'm no expert on the EU. I know bits and pieces of Legends material, I know bits and pieces of the current EU, but I'm no EU enthusiast. Like, the most I've dove into the EU is the video games. Like, that's what I, and that's where it's like most people Star Wars fits, like, they only really dove into the video games and maybe some comics. But yeah. Darth Maul, like, cause, like, guys, like I said, cause I know about the EU, I know bits of it, so I know why Darth Maul's, you know, through because of the Clone Wars, and, but I get this, and my, I was watching my mom and my dad, which, of course, those who do not watch the Clone Wars are really delve into the EU, besides the movies, um, so they, I'm surprised they weren't asking me, like, a million questions, like, how is Darth Maul still alive, wasn't he cut in half in, like, you know, the Phantom Menace, and I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I feel bad for some people, cause, like, I definitely gotta give, you know, um, Lucas Films and Kathleen Kennedy props for actually, you know, taking that risk, you know, that, you know, that, that, that the, that the fans that know about the EU will, like, you know, lose their shit over this, and the fans that just watch more are probably gonna confuse the health, they're probably, like, you know, I don't know, figure out yourself, watch the Clone Wars, or find some YouTube channel named Star Wars Explained telling you everything that's happened since Phantom Menace about Darth Maul. Yeah, so... I don't know. I don't know if Darth Maul's gonna make a few appearances in Star Wars movies now or not. But I definitely say I give them props for that, which puts more for Marvel because Marvel didn't because Marvel didn't put the Netflix guys in the movies because you probably due to the fact that not everyone a fan of the MCU do watch the Netflix, which I can understand. So a lot of people would be confused if Luke Cage or Daredevil or Jessica Jones or Iron Fist suddenly showed up during the Battle of New York and you know Infinity War, but at the same time they did this, so Marvel. I'll just step your game up to the Netflix characters in the movies, you know? <laughs> anyway. So yeah. Darth Maul was nice seeing him again. Having him make his triumphant return on the big screen. I did not expect, like, of all characters I expected maybe, maybe would have a character like, you know, Job of the Hive. Which unfortunately Job is in the movie, which I kind of sucks, but Boba Fett's not in there, but hey, he's getting his own movie, so I'm happy. I, Darth Maul was like the last guy I expected to ever because of the EU, because I didn't think Disney and, or Lucasfilms would act, or Kathleen Kennedy, I should say, would even have the balls to even tackle any characters that were brought back to life in the EU into the main movies, you know? So that was very shocking, and I definitely gotta give Disney props on that one for actually giving for I mean, so letting us see Darth Maul make his triumph because it was just great seeing the man again. Which I gotta say, let me talk about Rebels real quick. That fight between him and Obi Wan, that fight was shit. Like how dare, how dare you guys at Disney give us, you know, hype of the fact like, oh yeah, we're getting a rematch between Obi Wan Kenobi and Darth Maul. Years after their first duel, when then the in fact after years of press of of mastering the force, when they're like you know older, wiser, it ends in like one hit. Come on, like at least give me a good five minute long fight. Now I'm not expecting it to be on the prequels because these guys are old, but I don't know, give me some like a level maybe Empire's fight or hell even if uh, I would have taken you know a new host fight when it's just two girls are just poking each other. I would have taken that with just, you know, some dialogue between them how, I don't know, I was once a learner, but now I am the master or some shit like that. You know? But hey. So, over to you guys. Uh, that's the end of my review for Solo Story. I would recommend, if you have not seen the movie, I would recommend to you guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new, follow the Instagram, Twitter, feel like, please don't show us below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.